Okay, Guru Nation, thank you for watching. I'm gonna dissect as quickly as I can a monitoring visit report for you guys and gals. Uh, I might do a long podcast on this to go more in depth, but this is one of the things we teach in our CRA Academy. It's also one of the things we definitely make all of our interns do when they come here to Southern California or any of our other sites um, that I am affiliated with. So that's that's kind of what we have our interns do. And it's also included in this book. Okay, the, if you have that book, this same template that I'm looking at is in that book. So let me break it down for you because these things, This is, and by the way, any of these things, each section, the IMV report is broken into various sections. I'm gonna go through the sections with you now. So the first section is the header where it lists who the sponsor is, what the protocol number is, what the investigational product is in this case. And by the way, every CRO, every sponsor has their own template, but this is pretty generic, pretty much across the board for everybody. So, and then what visit date, what date are you actually doing the interim monitoring visit? the most common monitoring visit that's out there. The next section has who the PI is, what the site address is, what the telephone fax is, what the site number is, what date the report is, um, the site staff that were present, and the sponsor staff, if applicable, that were present. Then it gets into recruitment status. So how many subjects, how many have been screened, how many have been randomized, um, how many discontinued, how many still active, how many completed. Then you get into the meat, the bulk of the of the report, which is going to be the next several sections. So the first one is staff and facilities. And keep in mind, any of these things are job interview questions that they ask. When they do behavioral questions, when they do situational task action response questions, they they're, might pull from these kind of reports, especially if you say you're a CRA. Okay, this is what they expect any CRA with any amount of experience to be familiar with. Um, so it's good for you to be familiar with it as well. So does the first section, staff and facilities, does the investigator continue to fulfill obligations? Does the site personnel have adequate time to fulfill their obligations? Are investigator site personnel performing their designated functions as outlined in the delegation log? All of these are checks, so they have a yes or a no or a not applicable. You have to go through every single one and put the correct response. Then on the bottom of every section is this comments section where you have to write, if everything was normal and as it should be, you still have to write a comment. The CRA, you never say I, you never say me, you say the CRA met with the PI, the PI continues to fulfill obligations, the site personnel are the site personnel continue to be adequate to fulfill their obligations. Everyone on the delegation of duties log is, is performing their appropriate functions, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so that's the staff and the facilities. That's the first section. The next section is about the IRB. Okay, are IRB approvals up to date? Has the protocol been revised since your last visit? Has the informed consent been revised since the last visit? Is the latest approved informed consent being used? Have informed consents been obtained appropriately in a timely manner? And are they documented appropriately? This is, remember, this is the process of consent. If you don't know, watch that five hour video, Crash Course, The Comprehensive Guide to Clinical Research. All right, next section, subject status. Is recruitment enrollment rate as scheduled? Have enrolled subjects been properly randomized? Is the subject screening and enrollment up to date and accurate? Again, everything is yes, no, not applicable. Next section, protocol adherence. Has subject eligibility been reviewed? Have protocol deviations been identified? If yes, um, were they documented on the protocol deviation log? If yes, were they reported appropriately to sponsor an IRB? These all require yes, no, or not applicable. Again, another comments section under here. Every section has a comments. Okay, then you cannot not have comments. And especially if something is abnormal at that visit, you need to explain. You got a lot of explaining to do, okay? Uh, next section, CRF review, which is case report form review, which is same thing as EDC, slash source data verification. First one, are source documents adequate? 
Was source document verification versus EDC performed at this visit? Has data entry been completed with specified timelines? Um, is there adequate adherence to the protocol and the amendments? Again, comments, all right? That's another section. Next section, safety aspects. Have adverse events been appropriately documented and recorded? Do any subjects have any persisting adverse events? Okay, have any serious adverse events been found or reported since the last visit? And then if yes, there's a whole lot of things there. If yes, have reporting procedures been followed? If yes, have SAEs been reported to sponsor within 24 hours? If yes, have SAEs been reported to the IRB? Again, comments, comments. There's a lot of writing as a CRA. That's why it's important that you know how to write well, that your grammar, if your grammar is not good, you need to learn, you need to go take a class. Okay, subject safety review. This is where you list any AEs that are, SAEs that occurred. Okay, next section: investigational product. Was the pharmacy or IP room visited at this visit? Has the IP been stored appropriately? Was the temperature log reviewed for any excursions? Um, if there were excursions, was the sponsor notified? Has the IP been dispensed and administered according to protocol? Are IP accountability records accurate and up to date? Does the site have an adequate supply of IP? This is, look, we're only halfway through this report. This is why being a CRA is so stressful. You gotta do this every single time for every single site that you monitor. Does the site have adequate supply of IP? Are the emergency code break envelopes intact? Has there been a break in the code? Are all shipment records on file? Again, comments. Next section about laboratory and supplies. Have all clinical and PK lab samples been collected correctly? Have all PK and clinical lab samples been prepared and stored correctly? Has the clinical lab PK sample tracking log been properly maintained, if applicable? Has the laboratory freezer been maintained appropriately? Are the laboratory controlled supplies being maintained appropriately? Have all clinical lab samples been shipped correctly, received by the lab undamaged? Does the site have adequate inventory of lab supplies? Attention to detail. Again, comments, all right? This is not easy to be a monitor. Next section, regulatory binder review. Was the regulatory binder reviewed at this visit? If no, provide date of last review in comments. If yes, were there any outstanding missing documents? Was the site monitor visit log signed and up to date? Don't forget to sign that. Was the subject screening enrollment log up to date? Usually they're not. Were protocol deviations violation log up to date? Sometimes they are. Was the signature and duties delegation log up to date? Or the delegation of duties log and the site signature log up to date? List any discrepancies. Has 1572 been updated, updated since last visit? If yes, let us know. Specify what change was made in the comments. Okay, details, details. Next section is other issues. Are there any other significant issues to report? Was a follow-up letter sent to the site? Please provide date of next monitoring visit. Um, and then remember to check the informed consent review log. All right, and then remember to put the ICF version that is currently being used and date that each subject signed what version with comments and then action items. Okay, action items. And you're also gonna document which visits and which subjects were source data verified, All right? So you're gonna literally list out every single subject and which visits you verified at that visit. Then you conclude it with action items, All right? the date you identified the action item, the action item itself, what the site needs to do, or maybe the sponsor, there could be action items for the sponsor, um, and the resolution date, or is it still ongoing? You send this, then you sign it, you send it to your lead CRA, the lead CRA has to get the sponsor to approve it, they're gonna go back and forth with you on some revisions, some comments, then when the sponsor approves and finalizes your IMV report, you're now allowed to send a follow-up letter to the site with all the action items. So it's very important, very detailed. Try to keep this under 10 minutes. Good luck. Uh, watch the five-hour video because we go in depth on these things. The podcast will go in depth. The book goes in depth. Um, talk to you soon.